that's a little bit about uh, you know involving the defenders with inside of the game uh, and uh, penetration testing is a little bit much more lower level but all of them they fall under the same you know uh, umbrella of scheme of ethical hacking so please don't get confused about all those jargons the buzzwords that you just heard now i want to take you through uh, this presentation where uh, you know it will be from a very basic point of view i won't be going into too many in depth uh, things there but you know for just i think this presentation should serve as one of the first presentations where i'm also planning to start you know multiple presentations later on in a much more advanced level as well given the permissions from your uh, you know from your higher ups from your authority so this one is you know like treated like as a 101 right for everybody who's not uh, uh, you know uh, has got any idea about cyber security about attackers about the different kind of threats i'm going to take take them so you know one by one probably showing you some uh, videos as well and showing you some real attacks as well all of that hopefully later on you know i have plans with my other uh, you know counterparts my other friends that we want to do hands on sessions as well so teach people about you know different kind of uh, stuff that is going to come up soon so let's start uh, i'm going to play this so don't get alarmed the first few slides are nothing but you know just some kind of a music to entertain you uh, this is how i like to start off all right so this is not really music this is actually for a, a kind of um, uh, uh, you know it's an islamic uh, uh, in musical instrument way back during prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, okay it used to be played it's like a small you know a uh, uh, rhythm and a song when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam visited madina you know the people of madina you know were you know singing this so i've kind of uh, captured this in kind of a small melodonymic voice and i'm going to start you with this all right so let's get started All right. So the concept of knowing your enemy is not a new one. In the year 500 BC, there was a Chinese general called Sun Tzu who wrote a book called The Art of War, in which he stressed the importance of knowing your enemy. Sun Tzu stated, if you know your enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. But if you know yourself and not your enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. And if you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. This military doctrine readily applies to today's world of computers and uh, you know cyber security. Like in the military, we have resources to protect. And to help protect these resources, we need to understand who and what are our threats. Who is the enemy that is targeting us? And this presentation is to highlight about the different kinds of enemies and their different kinds of threats in order to implement effective defensive strategies, right? So that's the whole goal. So this is the agenda for today's uh, session. I will briefly introduce you to the concept called cyber warfare, which is currently happening all over the world. We will discuss who is the enemy, you know, perpetrating the cyber warfare. We will talk about the different kinds of threats that they are capable of unleashing on us. We will also talk about their basic attack plan, right? I'll kind of go and, uh, you know, decide their attack plan and we'll go and see, you know, what there it is. We will look at different tools and their TTPs. The TTP stands for the techniques, techniques and procedures. We will also look at some uh, defensive capabilities on how do we go and defend against them. We will look at, you know, something called active defense. 
and then you know something called cyber defense and you know we will kind of then wrap up by introducing to you some new technologies which are there sorry new concepts which are there in cyber security which are really you know like uh, uh, if people have this kind of skills they are like hot patat potatoes right people will pick them up threat hunting active defense cyber deception and all that so let's quickly go and check this out so before i start off uh, some jargon to uh, you know understand that you know that all of us that we will be on the same page right so vulnerability this is a weakness in the system it could be either a software bug a design flaw in the hardware or any kind of weakness in the system application or network that can be exploited by attackers to gain access into the system exploit is actually a program that will manipulate that vulnerability to give you access unauthorized access to the system threat is the people are some kind of a, a you know threat actor who has got a potential to do harm to the computer system basically by accessing your system without you knowing it right intrusion is a computer break in black hat or the bad guys commonly we call them as black, black hats the white hats are people like us you know the penetration testers red teamers we call them as white hats so what is cyber warfare so cyber warfare is the you know the recent uh, you know uh, buzzword or kind of a uh, you know new phenomena which is happening all over the world where you know uh, uh, countries they are now uh, you know taking this up very seriously just like they have their uh, army defense and all that so every country is trying to establish their own cyber teams or cyber warfare teams right and this happens a lot than what you probably know and these are attackers who are you know trying to go after you know different different establishments uh, you know and just to undermine a country's economy undermine the resources and all that and it happens in many different forms right and uh, why does it happen because it, it's all about you know electrons or the data so the world is not run by weapons anymore or by energy or money it's run by little ones and zeros little bits of data it's all just electrons which are nothing but data right and there's a war out there and it's not about who's got the most bullets it's about who controls the information what we see what we hear how we work what we think it's all about information it's all about data right so this is uh, from a you know movie called sneakers and you know it's a very famous uh, thing that gets attributed so the world everybody uh, so the world all over is full of data and the hackers and everybody is behind this data right and that's why you know every uh, now and then there is a breach that is happening all over the world this site okay which is a site called uh, informationisbeautiful.net and inside of this website there is this world's biggest data breaches right i just pulled it i think uh, somewhere last uh, about a couple of months back every year they have you know um, uh, i mean they keep a record or they, keep, they you know visibly you can see how many organizations got hacked and what is the losses they have you see here so so many different organizations each bubble there is a different company different organization so they have the track record from 2007 onwards and every year it's kind of you know the scene is repeating all by itself every year new new organizations are falling prey and it's happening again and again and again so what's causing all this what's really happening is it just the organizations or is it people like you and me also right so that's what i want to going to answer in this session so there are a lot of uh, companies that who are uh, losing information this is a report from semantic uh, internet security threat center this is a kind of an old one but it just tell you from 2016 1.1 billion you know identities were stolen right and i don't have for the latest one but it's uh, i wouldn't be surprised if it is more than that and this is from uh, a wipro from for india right 2.7 billion records were stolen just in 2018 
and then you know this is uh, increasing a lot so it's like you know this is giving you some statistics and this is uh, you know ponimon institute is a uh, average cost you know from 2012 to 2018 keeps on increasing for cyber security each amount of loss that means to say these losses that are happening these breaches are really hurting the you know the bottom line the dollar value uh, not only in terms of you know for the com uh, companies out there industries out there but as, as we individuals as well so i'm going to talk about it now so the breaches that happen or happens in minutes all right this is verizon uh, dbir database investigation report which says look at this okay whenever a company gets hacked it happens in seconds to minutes within seconds to minutes it gets breached exfiltration is the data gets stolen within minutes okay and then the discovery part that is you know when does this breach get discovered it happens in weeks or months right this next graph here will show you so this one here uh, is now showing me uh, i have for three different territories americas on your left uh, emea europe middle east and on the right apac so if you just look at it okay in 2017 uh, americas uh, were had a detection time of 75.5 days that means to say the attackers were there for 75 days on an organization system before they were detected in america that's nearly you know more than 3 months but look at in europe it's 175 days before they were detected in 2017 this is right so the 2018 2019 they are all the same more or less and uh, here the apac which is us europe uh, pacific middle east uh, sorry uh, asia um, this is 480 and this is more than one year so the breaches happen in seconds and the data gets exfiltrated or the data gets stolen from our systems within a matter of minutes and the hackers are you know lying down our our system they are there they have persistent connections they are always there on our infrastructure and trying to steal data but nobody is able to detect them and this figure says you know 489 this is this so what does this tell us this tells us that there is a very pathetic state of affairs in every company right Uh, their technology is not able to you know uh, uh, prevent the attackers nor detect them while they are there and this detection is again not happening by the companies themselves this is happening from some third party law enforcement people where they are trying to you know do some kind of uh, troubleshooting or uh, you know uh, investigation of some you know breach on the internet and they happen to see this company's data on some foreign servers and that's how they call them and tell up hey we are seeing your sensitive data here on this foreign servers uh, that means to say go and check your system probably you're already hacked and that's when when company check you know they know that they have already been breached right and numerous examples like this that you know pay companies today are not able to detect this breaches yeah so that's the ground reality situation so who are the people who are doing this right so the uh, i i have two categories of uh, you know the uh, attackers this is the enemy in the past uh, you have to know them all right to understand the current enemy who are much more advanced than this previous enemy so this enemy in the past we had a easy way of classifying them right they were known as hackers crackers freakers and script kiddies right this were the one right this is going back to 2004 2005 time frame this is what we used to deal with so who are they so hacker is a term given to a individual who is um, who wants to learn about the system he is highly skilled and he does not intend to gain profit or uh, you know want to damage the famous example of a hacker is this guy called robert morris junior who accidentally unleashed a worm called the morris worm onto the internet he was actually playing around with a send mail application the application that is used to send emails on the internet and somehow it had a vulnerability which got converted into a you know virus or a worm i'll tell you what is the difference between virus and worm and it started replicating and propagating itself onto the internet at a rate 
much faster than what Morris anticipated. And it brought down the whole of the internet in way back in 19, early 19, uh, uh, 90s, yeah, late 1980s, early 1990s, yeah. And when Morris realized what was happening, he contacted his friend in Harvard. Together, they decided to send an email to with instructions to stop this, uh, you know, this virus from propagating. But the whole of the internet in those days was with this worm traffic, and it did not reach the inten intended recipients. And that's how you know, the whole of the world came to know that there is something called worm and viruses that can be taken advantage by hackers, right? So this is the guy called Hacker. He didn't intend to do damage, but that's how it happened. Then we have a guy called Cracker. Cracker is what we refer to a criminal hacker. And he uses his skills to do damage, to earn profit. He can be very destructive. Probably the most famous example of a cracker is a guy called Kevin Mitnick, who, who was known as the lost boy of cyberspace. He hacked to many companies like IBM, Digital, Novel, way back, right? And his modest operandi was he used to go and, you know, uh, do social engineering attacks. I'll tell you what it is a little uh, while from now. And then he used to be very successful. His famous attack was against a Japanese researcher called Sutomo Shimamura, who was developing the GSM mobile software that you and me are today using in our mobile phones. And he wanted to steal it way back in 1993, 1994, where the cell phone was still being invented. And, you know, he conducted this attack. He was able to steal the software from the internet. But finally, you know, Sutomo Shimamura, along with FBI, tracked him and they sentenced him to jail, right? So the jury ordered that he be sentenced to five years rigorous imprisonment. And uh, when he was out of the, uh, you know, bail, sorry, out of the uh, you know, time spent in the prison, the jury ordered that he should never touch computers for the rest of his life. So today he's out, but he cannot touch computers. So, but he is now a rock star, right? He goes and talks in big, big conferences. He writes books. He comes on television. He earns millions now because of his cult status. Yeah. So that's the first cracker. Then we have somebody called a freaker. A freaker is a phone hacker way back in the 1990s when uh, DSL or the internet was not that cheap. Uh, and it was not that, uh, uh, you know, common. We used to have modems to, uh, you know, connect to our systems. And modems were the ones that was used by this hackers called phone hackers. Yeah. Kevin Paulson uh, was a famous guy who used to do all this. Uh, once there was a contest taking place in the Los Angeles area radio station where it wanted, you know, the person to win should be the hundredth person in the uh, call. He rigged all the telephone lines going into the uh, Los Angeles area, area radio station, ensuring that it, his would be the winning call. And he got a Porsche luxury car and a trip to Hawaii for his efforts, right? Of course, nobody knew he was hacking. So then we have an, another guy called Script Kitty. This is a guy who does not have the skills, but he's a very dangerous guy because he downloads tools on the internet without knowing you know, what the tool can do and he can easily start running them, right? Just download it and start randomly attacking anybody. Type in the IP address or the name of the company and boom, right? So this guy can be very dangerous. And today we have this script kiddies a lot. So college students or anybody who wants to get into hacking, they just download the tools. They don't know what the tool is doing and they can be very destructive because they don't know how all this is happening, right? So don't, uh, you know, be a script kiddie. So that was a little bit past of, uh, you know, the thing. But now the scene has changed altogether. We have a different enemy, much more lethal, much more powerful, much more advanced. So who is he? So the, we now have somebody called nation state actors. That's what I told you a little while back. So we have countries who are grooming this kind of hackers. China is famous for them. Russia, North Korea, even we have India, right? And these are all their names that you see on the screen. APT1, Advanced Persistent Thread. Fancy Bear, this is usually from Russia. Okay, Sandworm. These are all, you know, different kinds of attacker groups. And then we also have cyber criminals, Carbonac, Lazarus, you know, these are all, uh, they have so great skills 
that they can completely take over a bank and their complete bank's technology, right? With their attacks, right? So I'm going to share you some real attacks. Then we have hacktivists. Uh, we have shadow brokers, right? These are like activists, but there are more, you know, from a uh, you know perspective of these guys. Anyway, so now uh, I want to show you the anatomy of an attack, right? So there are a lot of different ways of how do uh, the attackers do and how uh, they are being studied in detail, but they're called as cyber kill chains, yeah? So one cyber kill chain that I'm going to show you here is like this. So they start off with a reconnaissance. Reconnaissance is they want to do information gathering about the target, right? So they will use social uh, uh, media. For example, LinkedIn, they will use uh, search engines like Yahoo, Google, Bing to profile your target, right? If they want to attack Gaussia College or any professor, the first thing is they want to go to, you know, social media and then try and, you know, get all the information about that. And none of this uh, information is, you know, will be visible uh, by the actual victim that he would know, he wouldn't know that nobody is doing this reconnaissance on him. It's very stealthy, nobody would know, right? And there are a lot of sites that do this. One such site is called shodan.io. Uh, let me very quickly show you here. Uh, if I have this, um, hang on a second. Um, yeah, this one here, um, shodan, if you look, can you see this screen? Anybody can see this screen here? Uh, if you can just, uh, anybody can turn off their mic and at least, you know, type in and say, so this Shodan is a website, okay, where I can go and search for, you know, internet of things which are exposed. Uh, I can, you know, check the, you know, uh, things that are connected. This is like Google, but this is uh, for non HTTP stuff. I can check for, you know, uh, internet of things, power plants, refrigerators, you name it. And I can go and go after any ICS, SCADA, you know, anything for that matter. Yeah. So um, that's the, uh, you know, the stuff there. So a lot of, um, I'm just going back to my slide here. So that's the reconnaissance. Once they do the reconnaissance, they go to the second stage, which is weaponization. They try to create an exploit and then they want to send this, deliver it. So delivery will be using through some kind of, uh, you know, email. This is called phishing attacks, right? They try to deliver. So anybody clicks on that email or opens the SMS message, you know, the weaponized code will be downloaded and it will get into the exploit mode where it will, uh, you know, get installed and then it will go back and connect to the attacker. This command and control is, you know, the software will go back and get, uh, you know, connected to the attacker's command and control machine where he will now start his actions. Okay, now go and steal this data. Now go, you know, roaming around, move from this system to the other system. Keep on hopping, keep on jumping, right? Until, you know, the attacker, you know, stops it, you know, this tool will be able to do. These are known as, you know, cyber kill chains. And probably in another few sessions, you know, I will go deeper into this kind of techniques that happen. But for now, let's quickly understand the initial stuff, right? After the reconnaissance, I, I'm not even talking about how the reconnaissance happening because that can take up the whole one hour or two hours of session. Okay, now I'm jumping in to, uh, you know, what is that virus or the worm that the hackers will create that will now give him access to the system. So there are a lot of things here, viruses, worms, trojan, bots, spyware, right? Uh, what are all those, yeah? So let's quickly check this out. So I want to show you a video here. This is from my company that uh, I teach for them, which is uh, SANS Institute. And we have a program called Securing the Human. This is, you know, just for, you know, uh, non-technical people to tell them what it is. Of course, you know, this is just a 101. So I'm going to start off with this basic one. So let's quickly check this out. Malware is a combination of the words malware 
Sorry, yeah, um, I kind of clicked on our yeah. yeah. Okay, so that was a little bit about malware, right? So let's kind of, sorry, let's now kind of move forward. I want to show you uh, the different TTPs that they do. Social engineering, spear phishing, watering hole, zero days. These are all different attacks. Social engineering is, you know, basically trying to, uh, you know, cheat on a person to diverse the information, right? There are a lot of different forms of social engineering. One is called phishing. Okay, phishing is sending random emails that anybody can click. Spear phishing is uh, sending a, a targeted email. If I want to go after your HOD, you know, I will do all the research and send him a customized email, and he would, you know, be, you know, uh, have the confidence to click on that because I will have a lot of information pertaining to him inside of that email, which will most likely make him click on that. So it's going for the targeted attack, right? And there's an, another type of attack in uh, phishing called wishing. Wishing is, you know, voice using telephone systems to attack somebody. I'm going to show you a video now about this. Then watering hole is uh, basically the concept of, you know, in a jungle where uh, animals come to drink water, uh, wherever there is a pond or a river, uh, the lion or the uh, you know tigers they will be hiding behind a bush uh, you know where they come and drink so whenever the animals come there they pounce on them so similarly attackers will want to monitor which sites you frequently go uh, some newspaper sites that you frequently go or any site that you frequently go they will entice you to visit a fraudulent looking website just like that you know the site that you frequently go when you go there they have, you know, uh, some kind of, you know, inbuilt, you know, uh, 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 sorry, browser attacks that will take over your browser and they are already landed on your system without you knowing it. From there, wherever you are there, they will keep on moving with you, right? So let's quickly see this attack, which is wishing where, you know, the attacker um, uh, is trying to do this. Yeah. So let me quickly go into the next slide here. Yeah, this one.
So uh, don't get uh, into this uh, false idea that, you know, these are all some simple attacks. The attacks or the threat is real, right? So whatever I've just been discussing is just the tip of the iceberg. But, you know, uh, very recently, you know, critical infrastructure, big, big establishments, governments have fallen prey to this kind of attackers. Very recently, I think in 2017, Ukraine, the whole of the Ukraine's, uh, you know, was completely, you know, uh, I mean, a blacked out uh, by uh, hackers who very systematically took over their four critical, you know, power plants. And in one master stroke on the night of Christmas, Christ Christmas Eve, they brought down the whole of the Ukraine to its knees none of the electricity work, the refrigerators, the electric traffic lights, uh, the ATMs, and it was all misery, right? On the, on the night of the uh, December, it was like, you know, for 48 hours, the people were, you know, shivering in cold because, you know, of this particular thing happened there, right? And um, 2016, Bangladesh had a big hack incident where, the, uh, I, as I mentioned, the hacker group called Karbanak, they systematically hacked Bangladesh and they stole $181 million, right? Uh, and in just one shot, I mean, basically, uh, you know, had it not been for a very eagle-eyed administrator, uh, bank manager in uh, America's, the Citibank where the transfer was happening, maybe they would have lost a lot, right? So some hackers, they, they studied how Bangladesh Bank uses the swift, swift bank system and how the transactions happen and they carried out, you know, in a very systematic way. And of course, US elections and all the elections that are getting hacked, all of this is happening today, right? And then uh, the hackers are capable of much more than that. So we have this... Um, hack called Stucknut, yeah.
So what do you think is the real motive for this attackers, right? Um, so this statement here, uh, there are known knowns, there are known unknowns, but there are also unknown unknowns. This is, you know, from the guy, uh, Ronald Dumsfield, I think the cyber chief of staff. So this is, you know, probably uh, something out in the planning that is happening, right? So this entire nation became Russia, Russia's test lab. So all this is stuff is happening out there. Private sectors are on the front line of the digital battlefield, right? Enterprises, organizations, right? They, because they are less secure than government networks, and they are seem to be a safe target. And private sectors, you know, they have this complex uh, networks today. They don't have a perimeter network like a well-defined perimeter network today because they have cloud, uh, they use mobile, they use BYOD, they have a lot of complex systems and security is not really planned in the proper way. And the government is also not able to help us because, you know, government has their own priorities and that's why, you know, uh, every uh, organization is a target. And that's not only an uh, organization, but you and me are also a target, right? So that's why this slide here is to give you the, uh, you know, the realization that it's just not industries and organizations who are being attacked, but even you and me. I'm, I'm now very quickly going to, uh, you know, talk through the rest of the flights because I'm, I've looked at my time and I think I'm really, uh, you know, getting into my end of my time. I just have 10 more minutes and I need to wrap up. So anyway, so we are reaching the end of the presentation. So you and me, the individuals, we are also a target, right? Our usernames, passwords, our emails, you know, hackers, when they uh, bounce on us, our devices, uh, our systems, they can actually go and attack, uh, sorry, steal all this information. So once, um, are you able to hear me? I'm hearing some kind of a background noise. Is it all okay? You guys are able to hear me? Unfortunately, I don't have a screen here. Uh, sorry, a chat screen to understand if everything is fine in Hanky Dory. Shall I continue, Mr. Saif? Yes, sir, you can continue. Okay. All right. So uh, the uh, hackers today, when they are inside your system, like, uh, you know, your laptops, your devices, what can they do? They can steal your usernames and that username and password. Most of us do online banking transactions, right? They can steal our keyboards, our keystrokes. Uh, they can use this to, you know, um, operate on behalf of us, right? They can steal our emails and our emails contain a lot of sensitive information, right? And then they can also use this um, to, you know, impersonate us on the, uh, you know, your credit cards, your tax records, right? I'm not going into in depth about all this, but you know all this, right? So these are all the things that they can do. Okay, so the once hacked, they can copy and steal any virtual goods you have. Uh, they can make your laptop as a part of an army of botnet. Botnet is, you know, those hack systems uh, directly under the control of an attacker who can then remotely issue instructions to your computer uh, to be part of any evil activity, right? So they will use your hardware resources, your RAM, your CPU, your network, everything to do out their activity. So you wouldn't know the moment you are connected, you know, uh, your system is now like a willing slave in the army of an attacker, right? And they can steal your identity, uh, yeah, and all this stuff. Yeah, they can steal your hardware resources uh, for doing something called crypto mining and all this stuff. And um, now basically, how do we defend against this? So from a company perspective, from an industry perspective, right? These are some uh, technologies or concepts called cyber deception and threat hunting. Okay, uh, red teaming stuff. Okay, so uh, this is called a change in the mindset. The, it's a really a time of war now, cyber war. The enemy is very advanced, is stealthy, targeted, and he's, he's focused more about our data. He wants to steal our data. And he's already inside our house, inside our organizations. And how do we stop him? So this is a concept called UDA loop, which is the war, uh, war fighters, sorry, sorry the uh, air, air force, you know, for war planes, when they fly, they actually, you know, follow this UDA loop, observe, orient, decide, and act in real time. 
so today companies have to do this kind of concept called active defense where they have to in real time observe orient you know detect and start attacking and this is called a, you know a, 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 an active defense uh, i don't have time now to go into details about this but just to tell you this is about something called you know cyber threat hunting deception having honey pots you know beacons you know all this stuff but to do this you know the left hand side like you know you need to have your basic security controls in place like anti viruses firewalls you know patching and then only this comes to place yeah so this is what we normally do so you need to have this firewalls you need to have your whole infrastructure you know with multiple layers of firewalls uh, multiple layers of defenses and then then go and build a cyber deception cyber deception is like you know uh, everything is fair in in the game of war and love this is what they say right so here if an attacker is entering in our organization i know my organization's network concept, uh, infrastructure very well so i'm going to put him some kind of traps everywhere he comes in so that i'm easily able to detect him and lure him and then trap him this is called cyber deception the deliberate act of deceiving attackers in a, in an effort to you know do better defenses okay so to confuse them to slow them down because we can't really stop this attackers today there's no way of preventing an attack the only way is to do detection by doing cyber deception so these are all some techniques called honey pots honey ports honey tokens right don't want to get into all this because it's a lot of technical stuff maybe some other sessions we will go into this and then the threat hunting is the practice of searching proactively for those attackers who are already inside my network they are very stealthy no devices or uh, technology is able to detect them but i will be using some kind of skills to go deep dive into my data sets to pull them out right this is called threat hunting so why do we want to do this because traditional defenses can't keep up with new attackers uh, and their techniques and that's why we want to have humans who can do this yeah so this is i'm going to skip this slide so up from this information that i just showed you um I, the point that i want to tell you here is you guys are for, you know faculties here and you have students here and then uh, in cyber security we have lot of pain areas right still and we are looking for uh, you know people and we are looking for you know people uh, in this particular skill set in this particular area so you should be able to guide them today right so cyber security skill shortage is a huge demand for cyber security skills for people and then if anybody has the skills right they will be easily taken right so these are some pain points here i'm going to move to the slide and tell you the four basic cyber <clears throat> principles that you need to do uh, from a individual perspective always run the latest version of any software you install don't actually go and install any freebie and you know don't care, you know um, run in, in an updated fashion always have the latest version do not put in uh, put off installing patches always even for non microsoft so like adobe readers or whatever you have keep on installing the latest patches uninstall any software that you do not use right this is what will be used by attackers if you have an un, uh, software that you don't use and they will try to you know attack that software and gain access and never log in onto the internet with your browser with administrative privileges right if you happen to visit any fraudulent website or any sh shady website if you are logged in with admin privileges they will attack your browser because it's running with admin privileges and they will down uh, they will get uh, you know uh, they will land on your system with admin system privileges and take over so some cyber hygiene tips never click on links in email that you are not sure never open email attachments right use unique passwords for every single thing don't use the same password for your email for gmail for your company for your college no every single website should have a different password employ two factor authentication and you know use uh, bitlocker encryption to you know uh, encrypt your data on your hard disk use different browsers for browsing normal websites like um, you know the newspapers uh, uh, for youtube use a different one and also use a different uh, thing for your e-commerce thing like online banking right i use three different browsers so use different browsers for that kind of stuff yeah and then uh, there is something called a uh, last pass key pass this are password generators right so go and you know use the free ones and have unique passwords for different websites that you use right because if you have the same password this can be stolen and they can follow wherever you are right 
So never electronically share sensitive information with anybody like credit cards and all that. Always turn off your computers and wireless access points when you go back to sleep in the night. Don't keep your wireless access point open and don't post any public information online. All right. And do not download apps from unauthorized areas. And remember, when you post anything on LinkedIn post uh, uh, or Facebook, there is no, uh, you know, uh, undelete button. Right. So the moment you uh, post it, it's gone forever. So if anybody wants to track you, that's why many people have lost jobs, right? They post it in a fit of anger, anything about their company or whatever. And then they, you know, it cannot because it's now stored across the servers. So remember, use the internet in a very sensible and in a prudent way. Some closing thoughts. Okay. Uh, uh, I think I'm already done. So this is my last slide here. Every morning in Africa, a deer wakes up. It knows it must run faster than the fastest lion or it will get killed. Every morning, a lion wakes up. It knows it must outrun the slowest deer or it will starve to death. So it doesn't matter whether you are a lion or you are a deer. When the sun comes up, you better be running. So that means to say that you and I, you know, are always behind this attackers, right? And we should not give up saying that, you know, nothing will happen to us or, okay, the attackers are advanced. No matter what we do, they will, you know, take over our systems. No, we have to do our job. We have to secure our systems and all that. So these are some, you know, areas of specialization that you can give to your people. Cloud security is an important, you know, a hot thing today. And then we have forensic analysis, security operations, you know, all this stuff. And these are some coolest uh, cybersecurity ca careers there. I've just, uh, you know, think for your people out there, threat hunting, right? This is all like, you know, highly in demand skills, right? So I'm going to share you this information. Probably you can, you know, groom your people or, you know, uh, encourage them to take up cybersecurity, right? So in summary, remember, if you're connected to the internet, you're already, you know, a prey there. You are a combatant. And cyber warfare is increasingly getting sophisticated and defenders need to be, you know, on their toes. They need to learn how to create software. They need to know how to secure their data and they should, uh, you know, for organizations develop secure network architecture, active defense and all that. So I think I kind of uh, wrapped up it's just one minute to spare. Any questions before we close this session? Hello participants. Participants, any questions? Hello? Hope, hope there are no questions. Hello? Uh, hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, yes. Any question is there? Yeah, no, sir. In simple way, yeah, please ask. Let ask. us know can you, ourselves from uh, cyber can crime, you, sir. Can you pop up your uh, thing there? I can see you. Or it's okay, fine. Yeah. What what was the question? Sir, in simple way, just let us know how to protect ourselves from uh, cyber crimes. Because uh, uh, common people, you know, they don't know about these things. They they don't they don't aware of uh, these cyber crimes and all. Yeah. So in simple terms, you know, follow uh, cyber hygiene as I call it. Yeah. Um, as I was just mentioning, right? Don't be, uh, you know, click savvy. Click on anything that comes to you. Don't open any email attachments, right? And then, as I discussed in a few slides back, always keep your systems up to date and all that. This is from a personal perspective. So I'm going to share you uh, uh, all this, uh, you know, the slides that you know uh, you should uh, do uh, do's and don'ts, right? So probably. And hopefully, you know, uh, we will have an, another session. Uh, I think Mr. Saif is there where, you know, we can do something called cyber security do's and don'ts for, you know, uh, non-technical people to make them understand, right? So yeah, it's all coming up, yes. But I think I answered your question. In the slides, we will have more information. There. Yes, sir, thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, thank you, sir. Thank you. Please, please check the chat box. In the chat, there are a few questions. Okay, uh, where is the chat? Um, uh, when I click, click on the more. Uh, uh, sir, I, I'll tell you the question, sir. I, I'll tell you. All Hello? right. Yeah. Go uh, ahead. The participant Krishna Pradhi is asking, how is India prepared for it in terms of HR? Uh, how, how, how well is India prepared? 
in terms Hello? of in terms of hr what is hr human resource human resource human resource ah human resources okay uh, as i mentioned there is a big shortage all over the world it's not only just india there's a big shortage of cyber security professionals everywhere right and uh, they will never go out of demand very soon let me tell you yeah so uh, if uh, that's why uh, it's uh, you should uh, encourage your people that you know they should really learn cyber security and um, every organization today needs it even in this covid period there's a huge demand just for cyber security people you know to be on board it yeah again there is one more question from him yeah he is he is asking uh, can you throw some light on the interrelationship between the phenomenon of cyber crime and cyber espionage cyber crime and cyber espionage can cyber you... cyber espionage is uh, you know that's what the countries do like you know russia and all that this is like uh, you know the uh, spy work uh, espionage where you know like real spies so they have teams now that who uh, you know go after countries to try and you know uh, check out what they are uh, you know uh, what kind of secret information they have cyber crime is just like your normal uh, crime uh, like uh, you know so anybody trying to steal something right so cyber crime is uh, a kind of a theft like stealing your password stealing your credit card Cyber espionage is more from a nation-state perspective. I hope you got the information. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, sh shall we conclude, sir? Yeah, no? I'm done. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much from the uh, uh, on behalf of Ausia College of Engineering uh, Management and the principal, and as well as our uh, HOD, Dr. Zahir Ansari, sir. So it was a very nice presentation, really. Uh, really, uh, uh, Hidayat Khan sir has uh, shown uh, different fields of uh, hacking and all. How uh, can we protect ourselves? Uh, he has uh, told browsers have to be different for different uh, our requirements, and uh, unique passwords have to be used. Different passwords should be used uh, everywhere, and uh, no apps to be downloaded from uh, unauthorized sites. Uh, thank you, Hidayat sir. And he finally he said one word: cyber hygiene. It's a very uh, nice word. So to be safe, to stay safe, cyber hygiene is very very important. And uh, I was wrongly spelling espionage, and he has taught me how to spell it, is uh, how to pronounce it, espionage. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, all the participants. Thank. thank you very much okay. yeah so this is a 101 okay, hopefully you, we will come back with you know more sessions uh, to you guys thank you so much yes yes sir sure 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 thank you thank you very much sir thank you bye bye thank you andal uh, we'll uh, conclude the session we'll be again tomorrow by uh, again 10:30 am and there will be very nice presentation again all of you uh, please join tomorrow 10:30 thank you abrar sir abrar sir all right close this